Center for Trauma Resilience is a 30-year-old, actually 33-year-old organization, and our mission is to provide culturally and linguistically responsive programs, health promotion, and crime prevention education. And we accomplish that through a number of programs, including our 24-hour hotline that's available in English, Spanish, and for the hearing impaired through the Colorado Relay. We have our clinical program, which provides uh, traditional talk therapy, but we also have a somatic component so that we provide ear acupuncture as well as trauma-sensitive yoga. We have specialty areas uh, providing services for elders, for children and families. We have a legal immigration clinic um, that serves immigrants who are victims of violence. I believe we're serving something like 150 people from 22 countries, which brings me to our translation and interpreting center where we provide uh, language services in about 30 languages and dialects. And finally, for service providers, we created a compassion fatigue workshop, which is a full day workshop that talks about the brain and body on trauma. And in the afternoon, we do things like aromatherapy, um, creating a work of art. There's some yoga and meditation, but the heart of it is around uh, creating a self-care plan for service providers and people who bear witness to other people's trauma. What does it take to lead an organization with differentiation of self toward a greater differentiation of self? That is a big question. Um, I've been thinking about that for a little while. I'm gonna take um, a lesson from my training in anthropology. Um, my first response is that you have to pay attention. You have to be a participant observer. So uh, I do something that I call MBWA, management by walking around. Um, we have to um, distinguish our values, our beliefs, our principles from those of our colleagues, um, those from funders, those from politicians. Uh, so that's, that's what I do. I pay attention. Um, so I was just wondering how, um, when you're observing, uh, what's the benefit of, of the observation when you're observing it from a systems perspective, like an organizational perspective, as well as observing at the individual level? What, what are the benefits of that observation process? Oh, you get to hear sort of genuine, authentic, um, talk uh, from staff. They have the freedom to sort of express. Um, they share with you what's working, what's not working, and how that aligns with whatever strategy the agency is trying to implement. Um, I learn um, about any conflict that might be brewing, right? Um, and so we can use our very sort of robust conflict resolution process to address that. So years ago, the staff created a mission um, for how we were gonna to be together. And it says, we are, the Center for Trauma and Resilience staff mission is to create and maintain a cooperative work environment, which promotes accountability, trust, and respect for individual strengths, as well as team growth while we share a common vision. Um, and that's, that's what we're grounded in. That's sort of the foundation. When people come to work here, that is what they're met with. And they have to respond to that to see if that will be a fit for them. Okay. You've been talking about solid self, which is you mm -hmm. representing yourself individually or organizationally as it's ED. Um, how would you talk about connection as being also an important component of the success that you've had as a leader? You know, Ken, I, um, people often tell me that, oh, you're a different kind of executive director. I value, prioritize 
um, the health and well-being of my relationships with um, the staff. Uh, and I have a specific relationship with everyone that we hire and work with for the interns that I supervise. We spend a great deal of time um, making sure that communication and connections are clear. Uh, weekly staff meetings. Uh, and then there's program supervision and there's clinical supervision. Um, in addition to that, uh, the staff are welcome to, on an annual basis, we have a strategic planning session where they have a voice in saying what direction the agency can go in. Because um, while I um, am the leader, I am also a team member. So I do what they do. I have a caseload of clients. I take my turn taking out the trash and cleaning the bathrooms. Um, when, every, when we initiated the yoga program, I became a yoga instructor. When we initiated the ear acupuncture, I became an acu detox specialist. So I'm their backup. Um, they can count on me and I count on them. Okay. So it sounds like it's been important to um, kind of establish person-to-person -person relationships with your staff. Um, to what degree, if any, would you say that's extended to your board of directors and then also out to, uh, for those who may not know about CTR, it has a whole community partnership, uh, other agencies and organizations that it interfaces with. How would you um, say that process of, of establishing individual connections with the board and your community partners, to what degree does that, has that existed? Um, you know, the board is a little, a little different animal. Um, they are pretty term limited. They come once a month. They have a very specific job description. I think with my executive committee, um, I have a pretty close, um, transparent, trusting relationship with them. Uh, and in the community, you know, we try to be we try to be good collaborators, good partners. We support agencies that are attempting to get their own 501c3. We are currently, I think, the fiscal sponsor for three other nonprofits currently. Um, we try to show up when we are asked to be someplace. Um, we offer um, people to come and meet us um, at our agency on a regular basis. Um, staff are very involved in community advisory boards and task forces and uh, yeah, that, that's how we show up. You know, I know that there's another aspect of what happens at CTR that um, is at the level of emotional regulation. And could you speak to how the, uh, the kind of programs that you implemented at CTR to help facilitate people uh, the staff regulating themselves, um, well, not just emotionally, but physically, and, and how do you think that fits with differentiation of self? Oh my gosh, one of the things I'm most proud about um, at CTR is that we implemented a self-care plan. So it's, it's part of the institutionalizing of wellness in the agency. So there are five areas um, that are part of staff job descriptions. Um, staff create goals in the area of physical, emotional, financial, intellectual, and spiritual health. And let me just pause here and say spiritual has nothing to do with religion. It has to do with something that is communal, uplifting, and gives you joy. Staff also create the measurement for their goals. And these, the self-care plan, the self-care goals are weighted equally with their administrative goals and their program goals. So I like to say that people get paid and receive raises based on how well they take care of themselves. Um, it has been 
it's it has been life changing, um, not only for the staff but also for the clients that they serve. I've seen our staff attrition almost uh, stall. That we, as a thirty year old agency, we have people who've been here more than 20 years, 15 years, 12 years. Um, so that's part of it. There's no abuse of sick time um, or vacation time. Uh, it, it's a phenomenal, a phenomenal kind of program. Um, in addition to that, what makes that thrive is that leadership does its part so that we provide a decent job description, not um, one that's a dumping ground for two or three things that you couldn't get funded. We provide great benefits. Everyone starts out, for example, with three weeks vacation a year. Um, you aren't allowed to eat at your desk. You can't come to work sick. People hide from me. Um, don't tell Kathy I have a sore throat. Um, you, you're not called when you're homesick or on vacation, we have to figure it out. So we create sort of bench straight. People are um, trained in various sort of areas of the agency. I talked a little bit about our robust conflict resolution. It's not just something that sits on a shelf. We talk about it in the hiring interview and we practice it. Um, we even role play it. Um, it keeps down the swirl, the, what I call the, the gossip whispers. I, it, you're familiar with speed dating. Is that right, Kat? Not it's you been personally. Well, it's been a while, but I-, I Okay, I all right, but speed dating. There was something a few years ago in the air, I couldn't quite put my finger on it. I knew something was happening, but there was no real public conflict and no one was complaining. But I said to the leadership team, we're gonna do speed conflict resolution. So I have this gong that we use in yoga and the entire agency took the afternoon and everyone met with everyone for two minutes. And if there was something that came up during an interaction, the two people set aside a time to either have that concern mediated or um, spend some time dealing with it. It was a fabulous afternoon. The staff now say, can we do it again? Can we do it again? I'm like, is there something else happening? <laughs> but um, so we take conflict uh, really seriously here. Yeah. And being able to, it helps us not have to deal with minutia. We can innovate, we can design, we can go forward because we're not in the conflict swirl. Or conflict. But I know we've spent many years talking about triangles and the management of triangles and using the conflict resolution process to address triangles. So I was wondering when you're doing the two minutes and people are meeting and I, I assume that they're trying to talk out something that's between the two of them and, and they have to get down to business because they only have two minutes. Um, how would you say that that's, that is diffusing a triangle from developing. It encourages people to be their solid self and not their pseudo self. It encourages people to recall the staff mission and the protocol that we have for conflict. I think um, in addition to self-care and conflict resolution, we offer staff both clinical supervision once a month and program supervision. So how they're doing in their job and how they're doing personally. Um, you know, a trauma serving organization, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year is difficult. Um, so I have to take care of my people and I take care of them. They take care of clients and it's, and then they take care of me and it's all good. Okay. Something that CTR is doing new and launching kind of as we speak, is integrating differentiation of self into the self-care plan. And that each staff member is identifying some, uh, identifying one of four components of differentiation of self 
um, to focus and work on eye position, emotional reactivity, fusion, and cutoff. They're going to be choosing at least one, if not more than one, area mm -hmm. of focus. So how did you decide that, that maybe that would be useful to add to the self-care plan that you already have established and that's already been pretty successful? By speaking with you. <laughs> um, I, well, we decided because it's the staff were really enthralled with um, Bowen's work and what it had offered them. And they thought it would be um, great to have an evaluation process linked with it, um, with self-care. Um, it, what one staff member said, it hasn't just made me a better employee, it's made me a better person. And um, I thought that was, you know, well said and good enough. And I have to say that I'm, um, as a part of uh, CTR, in the way that I have been over the years, it's been, uh, it's been exciting to watch an organization uh, grow and thrive the way it has over 30 years. There aren't a lot of nonprofits. I mean, CTR started out with basically no money. Um, it received some money from the state for crime victims, mm -hmm. but it's taken that small amount of money and grown it into this amazing nonprofit organization that after 30 years is continuing to thrive and be innovative. Um, I think that is a, is a large tribute to, to your leading from who you are. And I know that you have your values, beliefs, operating principles, uh, well-crafted. Uh, they don't change much from year to year to year to year to year to year. And I think that's provided tremendous amount of stability for the organization, as well as an objective uh, direction for the agency to be going. It hasn't ever really lost its vision or mission. It's uh, stayed pretty true to it. And I think it's uh, a lot your solid self that's helped to promote that along the way. 